These shoes are a bit different for legendary coach Mike Krzyzewski. His Blue Devils are coming off three consecutive losses for the first time in 11 years. And tonight, they meet Maryland in the ACC. Today, a classic ACC conference matchup puts two of the greatest living coaches in NCAA history on the same floor. And once again, the stakes are high. Gary Williams, Maryland Terrapins, host Coach K and the Duke Blue Devils. The Terps are among the tops in the nation in shot blocks with their tenacious tandem of Adikwe and Gist. Coach K and the Duke Blue Devils find themselves fighting for their ACC lives. Two teams who know how to get the job done. A grueling conference matchup. Duke in Maryland. This ACC Sunday Night Hoop battle starts now. the turn of the century, you could argue that it's Maryland that's been the number one rival to Duke's supremacy in the ACC. And tonight from the Comcast Center, those two get together. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tim Brando, and by my side, the G-man, Mike Jeminski. And when you look at where these teams are, you can make a strong case, Mike, that their collective backs are against the wall. When you look at Duke, Tim, at 5-5, five and five, they've lost their last three. They have to find success away from Cameron Indoor Stadium. And for Maryland at 3-6, and this is a must-win. They've yeah. got four home games left. They have to win them all. Let's talk a little bit about John Shire, though. Off that North Carolina game earlier this week, he finally took that major step to becoming maybe the guy in the perimeter. Well, coming up to that, the coaches talked to him about being more aggressive, and he certainly was in that game. A career-high 26 points for him. 18 field goal attempts, which was a high, including 10 from behind the arc. Now, it was a loss, but certainly he has taken a major stride individually. How many times have we said this, G-Man, that athletic front lines can be a problem for Duke. And that'll be the case with a pair of guys tonight for Maryland. We look inside, it's uh, Kenny Abekwe and James Gist, and they are one in three in the conference in blocks. Both of them very active on the offensive glass, and they can run the floor extremely well. They're going to be a handful for Duke's front line. Both teams have much to play for. And when we come back, the third member of our broadcast team, Jim Hildreth, will detail for you the history of this tremendous rivalry, particularly since the year 2002, when ACC Sunday Night Hoops rolls on. For years, I've been telling you how to get cash now for your structured settlement or annuity payments. Times change, and your financial needs change with them. If you need cash today, J.G. Wentworth can help. We work with thousands of people just like you to get the most cash for their structured settlement or annuity payments. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call J.G. Wentworth today. Call 866-523-7565. If it's local sports, it's here. If it's the latest on your teams, our sports night on campus coverage started right and early. If it's award winning coverage before, during, and after the game, it's here. Sports night is part of our 50 minutes all about your sport. If it's the Wizards, if it's the Redskins, if it's the Capitals, it's here. Redskins, go! If it's more local sports programming, if it's the games in high definition, it's here. If it's all of these things, it happens here together on Comcast Sportsnet. Because no other local sports network comes close. Here is your sports network. This is Comcast Sportsnet. You're watching Comcast Sportsnet, the local leader in sports television. The 2002 National Championship Trophy is one of the jewels of the Comcast Center. Of course, the women out of their own last year, but it's the Maryland men taking center court tonight. The fans, they were getting ready about 1 o'clock today. That's what you expect when the Duke Blue Devils are in town. Hello, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth.
Rutgers and while Duke North Carolina may be the number one rivalry in the ACC, there's little doubt that Duke is public enemy number one here at Maryland. In the last few years, this rivalry has really heated up. The two teams have split the last 10 meetings, and in six of those 10 meetings, Duke was ranked number one or two, adding a little fuel to the fire because you always like to knock off the guys on top. They're always winning. They always. I mean, they're filled with tradition. They always have great players. They have a great coach, you know, and they and they and they get the most attention out of it, out of any team in the country. So, you know, um, when you get the most attention, you're going you're going to be hated a lot. Well, over the last 10 years, Duke has been the most dominant team in the ACC, winning 81% of the regular season conference games. That included a win here at the Comcast Center last year. The Terrapins looking to avenge that with a win tonight. We have a great ACC Sunday Night Hoops matchup coming your way from the Comcast Center between Duke and Maryland. We'll have the tip off when we come back. We're doing research at the Duke Primate Center on how lemurs learn. We're trying to save these endangered species. We're studying how light bends in deep space around massive objects like black holes and galaxies. We teach ballet and provide dance therapy for kids at a local children's theater. That's what we do. What will you do at Duke? We're learning film theory and production. And we just made our first national television spot. Covering the world of motorsports like no one else. This is the Speed Report. Oh, look at that. Going beyond the highlights. Special sauce for the band. To bring you the full story. How did you do it? With expert analysis. What Formula One needs is personality. A brilliant victory for him today. The guy that got shafted here. Unrivaled access. Great this off. Heck of a race. You went for it. From the network, the drivers watch. The Speed Report. This is awesome. The Speed Report. Only on Speed. Listen up, America. The Cheesy Bites Pizza is back. It's back. There's never been a pizza more pullable, more poppable, or more irresistible. Get a large one topping now for just $11.99. Want more fun? Get America's favorite pizza, Pizza Hut. Wizards Wednesday on Comcast Sportsnet. A special game night starts with Sports Night. Then the Wizards battle the 76ers in prime time. And stay late for Wizards Post Game Live. The Wizards, the 76ers. Wizards Wednesday, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Thursday, Caps Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet. Alexander the Great of the Caps take on Tampa Bay. Then coverage continues after the game with Capitals Post Game Live. The Capitals and Lightning, Thursday starting at 6.30. Every game counts on Comcast Sportsnet. The opening tap is controlled to the Blue Devils. Greg Paulus running the show. This is a Maryland team. It knows, as Mike Jaminski mentioned, as it's back to the wall. Almost a must-win situation for them tonight. Paulus. And Paulus has been much more aggressive. Uh, he and Shire, the main scores against North Carolina, but took off in that point. Maryland's got four home games left. When you look at it, they really have to go 4-0 in that stretch and then maybe pick one up on the road. Conversely, the Blue Devils are on the road for four of their last six. And a turnover. It's this building emotionally charged right now as it always is for Duke here at home and play a little ragged early on. Coming off that incredible performance in a losing calls to North Carolina, Shire. Leaves it for Paulus, who drains home a tray. And he has been, Mike, in recent games, very streaky. Well, I think he's their best outside shooter. Shire coming on, but Greg Paulus has been consistent 40-plus uh, from the perimeter. Strawberry not there. Long rebound by McClure. He took an extra step as he hit the deck. And this is the thing. Maryland's had some issues early, I think, Jim. They fall, they, they fall in love with the jump shot. 
and they forget about their interior people. You know, that's going to go into Gist, the Beckway build, at least get them touches inside and then build out from that. Jones. A Beckway on the offensive glass. Yes, and a foul. Mick Roberts picks up the personal. This is one of the things that the Duke coaching staff very concerned with offensive rebounding of the Terrapins. A long, quick shot by Mike Jones, but it goes straight up. And a Beckway and Gist very active on the offensive glass. A Beckway gets the finish. Well, the old fashioned three point play for Kelly Beckway, the senior from Carson, California. And this sets up the other issue. For Duke handling the full court pressure of Maryland, which you're allowed to get into because of the free throw attempt. Vasquez checking Paulus. Henderson. Disc gets the rebound into the hands of Vasquez. He's a young man, too, that uh, is having to feel his way through his first year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Fine defensive play that time by McClure, changing up, using his quickness to get around and get the poke away. Henderson all the way to the rack, but unable to finish. Just clears for Maryland. Strawberry got past McRoberts. He was on the end line. So a turnover will go the other way, says Bob Donato. Well, you like the aggression by Strawberry that time, not settling for the jump shot, wanting to get out of the rim. of you that just saw that outstanding finish between Florida State and Boston College. Tyrell Blair hitting the big tray that was the difference maker in that win in Tallahassee which only firms up BC's hold on first place in the ACC. We're here at the Comcast Center in College Park, Maryland. Tim Brando, Mike Chaminsky, Jen Hilbert, happy to have you with us. Here in the early going, the Devils lead by two. Big road win for BC today. Next Wednesday, this Wednesday, they've got Duke coming to their place. So. A Beckway off the feed. They need him to be more aggressive. His scoring has been a little consistent, but uh, he's been a factor here early in this game. Vasquez picks up the foul, reaching in. <laughs> Take a look, Vasquez. He's very aggressive. He's, at his size, he can really see inside and get in the paint. Looking to make plays. He was very aggressive against Virginia in the first half. All 13 of his points in the first 20 minutes. Let's set the five on the floor. Starters Paulus, McClure, McRoberts, Marcus Nelson, and John Shire on the floor. Henderson actually started the game for Duke. It's a Vasquez to go along with Strawberry. This to Beckway and Mike Jones for Maryland. That ball is tipped out of bounds. It belongs to the Devils. You take a look at <laughs> just over three minutes gone here in the opening half. You look at Gary Williams. I've uh, felt all year long that he was uh, more at ease with his team, though there are three and six in conference. He knows how desperate they are for a win if they're going to try to make it into the NCAAs. But this is a very young team as Shire it's the baseline floater. John what a nice Shire. floater. Well, you know, the, Tim, I mean, they've got seniors. Yep. They've got a lot of seniors. The backcourt is young. Yes. But uh, they've got veterans everywhere else. Vasquez counted in a foul. I think that may be the issue, too, because these backcourts are both young, but they're very good. Let's look at Shire here. And then, Play coming in, and this is why I like these floaters. Maryland's the best shot blocking team in the league, so you've got to shoot that little five foot floater inside. But Vasquez is 6'5. Cutting inside, Nelson just late getting there for the charge. Just in talking to Gary, as you and I did before the game, Mike, I got the feeling that he's being patient with his freshman guards because he knows the best is yet to come, and he wants their confidence to be as solid as possible. Nelson, offensive foul, player control. And it's Gist that was in position to collect it. That's the second on Nelson. Let's take a look at the Pizza Hut lineups for tonight's game. Vasquez, one of those freshmen we were talking about. Strawberry, the veteran, along with Jones, the Beckway, and Gist. Shire, Henderson, McClure, McRoberts. Henderson's been replaced since we uh, came on the air. Vasquez lost that one on the way up. It's interesting to note that normally a shot blocker doesn't take charges, but Gist has stepped in a couple of times now and picked up the charge. 
Vasquez on the other end is really trying to test Paulus off the dribble. Martinez Potsus replacing Demarcus Nelson. Potsus has been seeing a bit more playing time of late. Vasquez. He's got some panache to his game. Huh? You really sense that there's a, a future leader in the making in Gravis Vasquez. And that's an out-of-bounds play that Duke uses. That quick hitter the inside of the post and then the inbounder steps in for the jump shot. This is an 11-2 Maryland run and an offensive foul. Mike Krzyzewski had it all happy with Bob Donato. Here's the look and uh, ball coming up the floor. Paul's straight away and he's the, uh, he, well, he can't initiate the contact. I think Grievous, uh, Grievous getting into his head a little bit right there and you just got to get the ball over half court and run your offense. Strawberry leans in, rejected by McRoberts. Paulus a pull up. Air ball, pulled down by a Beckway. Pat Door Jones. McRoberts picks it up. And he's a guy who really needs early success. He's missed his first couple of shots in this game, Mike Jones. Let's see if Shire looks for early shots tonight as he did against North Carolina. Paulus has already hit one from deep. And the long rebound run down by Strawberry, but it was deflected, and it belongs to the Turks. Timeout. An 11-2 Maryland spurt gives them a four-point cushion. I'm looking for my perfect match. I'm in sharing lots of pictures, quiet times. Must be virus-free. Got anything like that? Sure. Take a look at this notebook down here. With over 60,000 Windows Vista trained employees, Best Buy will match you up with a PC you'll love. This gateway is perfect for what you want to do. And Geek Squad can personalize it for you. Now when you buy a new PC, get this great offer from Geek Squad. It's time to love your PC. Come find your match at Best Buy. The 99-cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right. Just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents. Your dollar goes further at KFC. Everything's getting faster. Sexier. And yet, less expensive. So... Why not cars? Say hello to the G6 sedan, G6 coupe, and G6 hardtop convertible. G6, one of the fastest growing brands in America. Pontiac, designed for action. A story to tell. We love sports, and getting the real story with the players and coaches is what matters. No one else can give you what we can every night. This is what we do. It's the heart of local sports. I'm Brett Harris. Nobody covers Maryland basketball like Sports Night. Tuesday night, it's the Gary Williams Report. The coach breaks down what happened on the court and what's next for the Turks. The Gary Williams Report, presented by Subway. Eat fresh. Tuesday on Sports Night, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Maryland leads by four. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, the third member of our broadcast team, has been here for a long time today. <laughs> Jim Hildreth, Jen. Well, I've been here for a long time, but I haven't been alone, Tim. I promise you that because these fans have been into this game from the beginning and from many, many hours before the beginning, actually. They were lining up outside, getting ready. I'm talking 1 o'clock in the afternoon, four hours before tip-off. They're fired up. Their faces are painted. They're getting ready. Watch them fill the gymnasium. Didn't happen quite that quickly, but now it is certainly filled to capacity. Duke public enemy number one for the Maryland Terrapins, and you can certainly sense it with the intensity of this crowd. It always is true when these two get together, especially, Mike, uh, given the circumstances both of these teams find themselves in as we come out of the timeout. Eric Hayes has joined Vasquez in the backcourt, the other outstanding freshman phenom from nearby College Park, a little town about 30 miles outside the city. Vasquez unable to connect. Loose ball to Guest. 
Roberts follows his own shot. He just beat McRoberts off the floor two times that time. Duke very good at making you miss, but against Maryland, they've got to clean up the defensive rebound. Well, you touched on it earlier today. You felt that Gist and Abekwe would be difficult matchups for Duke, and Gist has already been felt. Well, here's the look inside. Now, we talk about quick jumpers, and that's just getting off the floor faster than everybody else. Gist very athletic inside, but he's become more of a basketball player this year. Potsuz throws it away. Been in five of Duke's six losses, they've had more turnovers than their opponents, and that's the direction they're heading in right now. The fifth turnover, and Maryland has been very opportunistic. They've scored eight points off those turns. See the field goal shooting story. Maryland just under 50%. They're at the outset. Hayes with the dump down to Jones. Gist off the feed from Jones. That run is now up to 15 to 2. Just off to a fast start in uh, two, two of the last four games, over 20 points for him, so you can just see his confidence grow. Turnover again by Duke for travel. Shire and Nelson will re enter the game. Strawberry comes in for Mike Jones for the Terrapins. Potsuz takes the seat, as does Gerald Henderson. Lance Thomas. Is also on the floor for the first time, number 42 in black and blue. Will Bowers is in the game. You can already see the effect turnovers having that Maryland has five more field goal attempts than he's at this point early in the game, but that's just a function of turnovers. There's Bowers, 31, working in on McRoberts. Felt the double team, gave it up to Hayes. Again, loose ball opportunities taken in by Maryland, but that time Bowers has his pocket picked by Demarcus Nelson. Maryland's defense not allowing Shire room to shoot. Strawberry! Well, Maryland playing at pure adrenaline right now, Tim, and getting out running the floor extremely well. Duke's turnovers continue to be costly. Look at that. 12 of their points off those turnovers. Shire pumps. Nelson on the offensive glass. Missed another chippy. Boy, those point blank losses and a foul, the end result, it'll go the other way. That, that pass just came a little bit too late. Uh, he was open on that first screen roll, and this is when you can turn points, turnovers into points. DJ Strawberry very fast in transition. Nelson got the foul. Marcus Nelson has picked up three very quickly in this game, and those point-blank misses like the one by Nelson a moment ago have really gotten into the heads of these uh, young Duke players. And Roberts and Nelson have both had shots to win games that haven't fallen of late. Second block shot by McRoberts. Shot clock under 10. Hayes a runner. Timeout, Duke. And they're blowing the lid off the Comcast Center. to an outstanding start and Mike I do think psychologically these early misses particularly on putbacks can become problematic when you think about those narrow losses for Duke of course everyone remembers the job that Virginia Tech did early Dow Dell Jamont Gordon and company and at the end of a couple of games recently Duke had chances Singletary hit what was the winner, but Paulus had a chance to win that game at the end with a three-point shot. And then, of course, the end of the Florida State game that we had, McRoberts and Nelson with a tip. You begin to wonder the after effects of all of that on this, this Duke basketball team. Well, if this game keeps going, they're not going to, Maryland's not going to have to worry about end game situations because uh, they have taken control of this early, and that's been an issue for them, or slow starts. They've gotten the start that they wanted. Duke is rattled by the circumstance they find themselves in right now. In fairness to that graphic under Mike Krzyzewski there a moment ago, remember, that was uh, with J.J. Reddick and Sheldon Williams. 
It's a little different with options one and two for this year's Blue Devils team. Shire feeds McRoberts. Paulus. And, uh, he's been the calming effect. A, a big shot coming out of a timeout. You want to execute and get a basket. And that time, you know, you're defensively, you can get over amped. And DJ Strawberry went flying by on the pump fake. And Paulus, the nice step through and finish. Greg Paulus has seven of the Blue Devils' nine points so far. Double team coming, takes it himself and gets the roll. He's seen expanded minutes recently and his productivity has gone up. At seven feet tall, he can play over the top of McRoberts. Thomas gets Bowers airborne and draws the foul. Timeout, 11-27 remaining. It was a 15 to 2 run that gave them the lead. And it's now all the way up to 12. Hey, what's up? Looks like you're in a hurry. I'm a legal document, very date sensitive material. Chill out. You should do a Sudoku. Sudoku? Okay, I have to get to a legal proceeding. Ooh, legal proceeding. Look at you. Yes, and I can't be late. Oh, pardonnez moi. You know, I'm just a plant. Hey, my ride's here. I gotta go. Right. The post office comes to you with free package pickup. Yeah, I have important things to do, too, you know, like create oxygen. Putting out the fire is their business. Helping you put the pieces back together is ours. The cleanup and restoration specialists at 1-800-SERVE-PRO, working to make fire damage like it never even happened. There's a place where simple food like chicken is now simply extraordinary. Where tomatoes are tantalizing and basil breathtaking. Artichokes art, mushrooms masterpieces, crab incredible and asparagus astounding. Introducing Chicken Fresco, Portobello, and Oscar. From the place where fresh ingredients inspire fresh thinking. Ruby Tuesday. Here's a radically simple suggestion from eLoan. You can lower your rising monthly payments by consolidating your debt with a home equity loan and paying one lower monthly rate. Just call 1-800-TRY-ELOAN or go to eLoan.com. eLoan. Radically simple. ODU Monarchs basketball. Exciting. High-flying. Intense. Action-packed. The Big Blue fires up the Constant Center all season long. See the Monarchs this Tuesday at 7 p.m. against the Hofstra Pride. Purchase tickets online at ConstantCenter.com. Maryland leads Duke 21-9, a 19-2 run. Tim Brando alongside Mike Jaminski. And let's not lose sight of the fact that one of the more athletic Duke players, Demarcus Nelson, Mike, got three very quick fouls. And that's going to be something Coach K will have to deal with all game long. Well, you look at the numbers, and Maryland got exactly the start that they wanted. Five offensive rebounds for seven points there. And Maryland has scored 12 points off Duke turnovers. So 19 of the 21 points right. are, are, are correctable. And uh, if Duke has to address that, better ball handling and sealing off of the glass. Lance Thomas, David McClure, Gerald Henderson, some of these uh, Younger players are going to have to log a lot of playing time tonight. Not that they haven't been of late, but Nelson's one of those guys that I think they really look to as, as a veteran leader down the stretch of many games. Thomas has struggled on the offensive end of the floor, has played fairly well defensively. There he is with an opportunity of put back. He's rejected by Strawberry. He and Gist both in there. Strawberry, Bowers, Gist, and Mike Jones, the five on the floor for Maryland. Jones blows by Shear, gives it up to Gist. I talked about James Gist has expanded his range to go out and knock the three. That was just inside the arc, but he has been a factor in the paint and on the perimeter. Seven points on three of four shooting for 
James Gist. This lead is now ballooned to 15. Nick Roberts. Thomas runs it down, but because he fell as he did, that had to be a travel waiting to happen, and it was. McClure will check in for him. We're looking out with the players on the floor for, for Duke. Who steps up? Paul's coming back in the game now as a guy who's got to settle you down. Shire's got to get some open looks, and, uh, and, and the ball has to go through McRoberts offensively. Right now, it's, it's, you know, it's not so much the offensive end, it's, it's the defensive end. Duke has to start getting some stops if they want to get back in this game. Back way to Gist. Oh, and one. You know, inside about the only other option on the inside is the shot blocker is Zubek for Duke. And Gist just too big right now, playing too big. Athletic can get up. Look at the way Beckway and Gist work together inside in the interior passing. Good stuff. There's a little bit of a discrepancy in the painted <laughs> area. I'll say. Uh, you know what? But you can look at every number right now, Tim, and see that there's a big discrepancy. That's how you get down 27-9. And Maryland has come ready to play in this game. Other than Greg Paulus, Mike, no one from Duke seems confident on this end of the floor. McRoberts particularly has been bothered. Gist picks up that foul, reaching in. First foul on James Gist, the junior from Silver Spring, Maryland. The foul's on 15, James Gist. Jen Hildreth has more on that confidence factor, Jen. Well, Tim, when we talked to Coach Krzyzewski before the game, that was something he talked about. He said it's really important that our guys don't take any baggage with them into this game from the previous losses. And I asked him specifically about McRoberts, who obviously had a chance at the end in a couple of those games. And he said, yeah, it affected him at first, but I think he's okay now and has his confidence back, though we haven't seen that so far yet. There's another steal. A Beckway gets into the passing lane. Henderson knocks it away for Duke. And right now, it's, it's just decision-making by Duke that uh, right here, just trying to make that tough home run pass inside, get the ball to an open teammate, and make easy passes right now until something becomes apparent. Jones. And the foul off the ball spotted. Beckway for a moving screen. Kenny Beckway gets his first. And Vasquez will re enter the game. Gravis Vasquez. Mike Jones takes a seat. Well, Gary Williams mentioned to us, Mike, that Jones is one of those guys that if he hits his first shot or two, makes a huge difference in his game offensively. And it's been that way throughout his entire career. Tonight he's actually made a few good passes. Been a tremendous all four game for the Turks here in the first uh, 10 minutes of the first half. A good decision. Pulse is open, but still early in the shot clock. Henderson way off the mark. And McClure in position for the offensive rebound. This is one of those cheap fouls that begin to add up as the game goes on. Beckway picks up a second. Bowers will be forced into the game. Yes. And that's what McClure gives you, those recycles. He's only 22-minute average per game, but he's third in rebounding at five, a little over five four, and he goes in and gets the, the dirty work done inside. Not a big-time score, but gets your recycles. With a Beckway leading and Bowers coming onto the floor, Brian Zubek just in, number 55 for Duke, collecting that inbounds pass, gives it up to Paulus. Paulus with a stop-and-go, and he got bumped along the way by Hayes. Wave off the bucket. Foul does go against Eric Hayes. Paulus will trigger in the inbounds. Shire looking to scratch into the scoring column. It's fed by Zubek, the pump fake. He's unable to get it to go. Strawberry, look how quick he was. Whoa! Shot out of a cannon. That's Strawberry. 
Paulus that time making a bad decision trying to track down the ball instead of getting back on defense. The lead up to 20. The Blue Devils are in shock. See right now with McClure, Gis can give him some room. Want to get a hand up on the passer, but he can play center field. Paulus, again, whenever the Blue Devils have really needed a play, Paulus has made it. Zubek that time, nice job shielding people off, giving him a little bit of a lane to get into the rim. Vasquez leans in against Henderson. Nice block out by Gerald. Freshman Marion, of course, is dad, a tremendous player, both at the collegiate and professional levels. Saw him the other night after the Duke North Carolina game. A teammate of mine for a couple of years in Philadelphia. You won't meet a finer gentleman. McClure. Over Gist. Maybe that'll get uh, James Gist's attention that normally McClure is not a guy who create offense for himself, especially off of the dribble. That was a solid shot. Powers on a blow by against Zubek. And it's an offensive foul. He got that shoulder down and picks up the player control foul. DJ Strawberry. With a wind sprint to a deuce. The lead was up to 20. It's now at 16. Prizes and pasta. One of countless combinations in Dave & Buster's Power Combo. Choose from nine entrees like the new Bar Burgers and Wings Platter and get a $10 game card for only $15.99. Eat, drink, and play only at Dave & Buster's. Pairing beer with food works just as well as pairing wine with food. A Sam Adams lager could complement a salmon dish with a little bit of spice to it. The maltiness and the hoppiness of the lager worked well with Indian food. With steak, this is a natural combination for me. The cherry wheat with the summer salads. The Boston ale balances well with the fresh. It's all a matter of finding the beer that fits what you're eating. If people are really honest with themselves, I think sometimes you'd just rather have a beer. Hi, I'm Rick. Can I answer any questions on your new CRM system? Um, not really. It's pretty intuitive. Thanks. Uh, ooh, honey almond. Heard the blitzes are good. Can I answer any questions for you? Hi, got any questions for me? Nice system. Closing deals left and right. We're out of blitzes. With the right software, people can train less and accomplish more. Hmm. The 99 cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right, just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents. Your dollar goes further at KFC. This week on the Bass Dance Sports Show, period. Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo drops by. How's he dealing with the after effects of the botched field goal heard around the world? Romo can't get the spot down. Unbelievable. The worm. Dennis Rodman talks about life after basketball. And he gives his opinion on the stricter rules in the NBA. And Friday, a special best damn fight night live from the Playboy Mansion you don't want to miss. This week at 11. 29-13, Maryland by 16 with 3-6. and six. All of this talk in conference play about must win brought uh, DJ Strawberry into a conversation with us about um, optimism versus pessimism the rest of the way. We have seven games left. Who, who's to say that we can't win all seven games and get hot at the end of the season? Now, that's the best time to, to play your best is at the end of the season. N nothing matters. If we win these next seven games, n nothing matters before that. And, you know, everybody's going to say that we're a great team and they're going to forget about all the other all the other bad games that we had so if we if we stay positive and just keep a positive energy around us and keep everybody that's negative blocked out I mean I think we'll be fine he makes an excellent point Mike when you consider the tournament selection committee one of its uh, priorities and its criteria would be the last 10 games and that home schedule you mentioned is to their benefit right and it's and I, I think that last 10 game thing is overrated as a criteria and it's proven to be over the last few years but you know you look at it and for, for strawberry as a senior I know there's a sense of urgency with him to get into the NCAA tournament after two years out of it Shire is bumped on the way up and let's go over to Jen Hilbert Jen 
Well, Tim, it's no secret that DJ Strawberry has struggled offensively in Maryland's ACC losses, but I was really impressed when I talked to him with that optimism that he has that you just heard from him. And he said he got that growing up from his mom and dad, his dad especially because of what his dad went through, all the trouble that he had to deal with. DJ had to learn early how to block all that stuff out and focus on some positives. John Shire is at the free throw line now for Duke. The only bad thing that happened to John Shire in the North Carolina game the other night was he got tired after hitting 40 consecutive free throws, missed his first. It was a three-shot opportunity and was just the beginning of really the, the woes at the free throw line in the last five minutes that really were the difference in that game. And 35 minutes in that game is like 50 minutes in most games yeah. against Carolina. And, Absolutely. Uh, your, your, your legs, especially for a freshman, but he and I tell you, he and Ger Gerald Henderson as freshmen were spectacular in that game for the first time playing in, in uh, that rivalry. David McClure picks up the foul, his second. There's a there's a special relationship between uh, Gary and uh, this young man at the free throw line, Gravis Vasquez. I remember he's, he talked to, told the story about uh, October 15th. He walked into his office, saluted Gary Williams, and said, reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> Young man from Caracas, Venezuela. Fun guy, just loves to play the game, and those are the types that, uh, that Gary really enjoys most. Does bring back memories of, uh, of Dixon and Blake. When you think about these young kids, Hayes and Vasquez, what they might be able to become before their collegiate careers are done here. Ball was kicked. Out of bounds, it belongs to Duke. You know, Tim, Duke has nine turnovers. All of those occurred when McRoberts didn't touch the ball. I think they need to get back to running some things through him and letting him either create offense for himself or for others. Dave Neal, big number 35. Burley frontline player is coming to the game. McRoberts blows by. Beautiful move. Right on cue from uh, the G-man. With the right hand, too. I mean, he's, he's very good with both, and uh, but uh, usually you don't think they left him forcing that way, but he just beat the defense with a better shot. Bombali Osby is coming to the game, number 50. In fact, he was the one checking uh, McRoberts as he went right past him and got that last deuce. So Neil Osby, Vasquez, Strawberry, there's Osby, rejected by McRoberts, along with Mike Jones, all on the floor. And another turnover by Duke. And Mike Krzyzewski doing his best to encourage Paulus. Uh, Paulus just in too much of a hurry that time to get up the floor. You could sense before the game in, in our conversation with Mike Krzyzewski that this is the first time he's been in this position in 11 years. Dealing with a team that has gone through a, a very difficult time in losing that many close games. First time since 96 that they've lost three consecutive games in the ACC. Paulus trying to make the pass baseline. And to me, that's the difference in this league, though, for every team. It's uh, the, the things that are out there are, are uh, injuries, which you don't have control over, and close games. Who finishes? Who wins those close games? And that can make the difference in a season. And in many in years past, Duke has had closers and finishers, and this year they're struggling to find that guy. Shire for three. Oh, the iron kind to John Shire, the freshman from Northbrook, Illinois. Finally, it's off the schneid from downtown. He's got seven. That's his first tray. And Duke, uh, no panic, just kind of chipping away at the lead. Down by 11. Neal. McRoberts gambled and lost. You know, Dave Neal came in and hit a big three against Virginia in the second half, and uh, Gary Williams starting to get a little more confidence in him. He's a solid ball handler. Made a nice play that time. Largest lead of the game was 20 for Maryland at one point. It's now 13. McRoberts from Poltsus, and another miss from close range for McRoberts. Paulus. Osby rebounds. McRoberts comes up, and he's limping. Uh, he, he fell into a crowd after uh, missing that shot. A lot of, there were a lot of bodies on the floor, including Osby's. Vasquez 
Offensive foul. And Roberts, even limping on a leg and a half, able to collect the player control foul. Nice work defensively by Josh. This is down the other end. Uh, McRoberts trying to work over Osby here, going off the dribble to step under and came down awkwardly on his knee. Like Strawberry stepping up underneath to take the charge. Yeah, that right ankle buckles a little bit. Didn't look like a really bad turn. But then I think because of that, because he couldn't elevate, he had to step in and take the charge on the other end instead of blocking the shot. That was the second foul on Vasquez. Some of these cheap fouls are beginning to add up on Maryland, both in the backcourt and the front court, while nursing this uh, double-digit lead in the first half. Could become a factor late in the game. Nick Roberts, strong move over Bowers, which is now a 13 to 4 Blue Devils run. Well, even though he's seven foot two, he's not a shot blocker in the mold of Gister or Beckway, so Nick Roberts realizes that just goes to his jump hook inside. Vasquez posting up on Shire. Took the extra step, it'll go the other way. 3.40 remaining in the opening half. The Terps slowing down. How are you feeling tonight? I'm thrilled. Cheesy Bites are back. Cheesy Bites are back. Tony, fire up the limo. Pizza Hut's Cheesy Bites Pizza is back. No pizza is more irresistible with 28 probable Cheesy Bites. Get a large one-topping pizza for just $11.99. Mmm, Cheesy Bites. What would you love? Want more fun? Get America's favorite pizza, Pizza Hut. ComcastSportsNet.com, your online source for local sports news, information, schedules, and scores. Plus, Sports Night video highlights, the latest on your teams, and more. Local sports on the web, just a click away. ComcastSportsNet.com. Hey, these guys joined my team and lost weight. Mike Golick, 51 pounds. Sean Salisbury, 35 pounds. Scott Conover, 100 pounds. Hey, Marino, I lost 32 pounds. Get real results with Nutra System for Men. You know, my wife told me I'm not as disgusting to her as I used to be. Call or go online now to get four weeks of awesome food. Plus, through this special offer, you'll also get an extra week of hearty meals free. Burgers, pizzas, lasagna, pot roast. Eat like a man and still lose weight. Our secret is the breakthrough science of the glycemic advantage that separates good carbs from bad. Now carbs are no longer off limits. Nutrisystem worked for me. Trust me, it'll work for you. About 10 bucks a day gets you four full weeks of rib sticking meals. Pick up the phone and lose weight. Order our four week men's program and get an extra seven breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and desserts. A full week of food and a $70 value absolutely free. So call now. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Pizza Hut, home of the pan pizza, where you can fill up on tons of toppings and our delicious crust. Want more taste? Get America's favorite pan pizza. And by Just For Men. Stay in the game with Just For Men hair color. College Park, Maryland, and the Terrapins leading by 11, led by as much as 20 early in this game. And to, again, put in perspective, G-Man, what this is all about for Duke. I'm sure this young team is probably fatigued by reading and hearing, but it is true. Look at this run. They've won at least 11 regular season ACC games for 10 straight season. That's that's eclipsing uh, by three seasons what North Carolina did back in the day. And they're currently five and five with six games remaining. I don't think there's any question that this team has struggled with being due. Yes. And then the, all the expectations and the uh, weight that goes along with that. And I, I think that streak is, is probably going to come to an end this year unless something miraculous happens in the last six games. But they have been extremely dominant in the last decade. Henderson, strong move by Gerald. But you know what? They've been better. They've gotten back into this game by attacking the rim, and they're also turning Maryland over. Maryland now eight turnovers in the half themselves. Hayes splits the double team, unable to hit. Powers and Neal remain in the game along with Hayes, Strawberry, Parrish Brown is in the game. He just checked in a moment ago on a timeout taken. 
Blue Devils will hang on to it with 2.55 remaining. The Blue Devils is now a 15 to 4 run for the Blue Devils. Josh McRoberts uh, has talked a little bit about the circumstances of being a Duke Blue Devil, and the reality is you're going to get everyone's best shot. Listen to what Josh had to say. We still know people are coming after us. We still know people are trying to shovel that dirt on us, uh, and people still don't have any respect for us. So it's something that uh, we, we know that we have a lot to prove every time we step on the floor. He's been watching Monty Python. <laughs> Not dead yet. Shoveling the dirt. <laughs> but as I said, they've been very calm, and, you know, Mike Krzyzewski's been through all this. He knows that there's 40 minutes in the game. They were down early, but plenty of time to get back in. Duke has shown some poise over the last eight minutes or so. 15 points off those 10 Duke turnovers in that huge run, but the Blue Devils have turned the tables of late. Shire. Lance, Lance Thomas, nice job keeping that ball alive. Thomas, McRoberts, Henderson, Shire, and Paulus for Duke. McRoberts rejected by a Beckway. Strawberry. Boy, Henderson went up into the third row. Trying to defend that streaking Strawberry, who's had a couple of breakaways tonight. Well, you get the sense that in his final game against Duke that he wanted to get the win. Makes a great play coming from behind defensively. This is a uh, veteran front line. You mentioned... Uh, it's a veteran team short of the guards. Strawberry really putting on the finishing touches for him in this rivalry. He has had one whale of a first half. It's amazing how that basket opens up for you after you get a few dunks and layups. Eight points for Strawberry. And basically, a Beckway not even guarding Lance Thomas except off screens. Henderson. Way off the mark. Thomas, nice save. That was all he could do in this situation. There's the luck inside. Gifts with that, that block, and uh, that's just the first pass to a fast break. Uh, Strawberry has been a rocket up and down the floor with the basketball. Potsus has come back into the game for Duke. Beckway has left the game as has Gist for Maryland. Eads, Bob Donato, and uh, Tom Lopes, our veteran officiating crew. Shire for three. Look out if he warms up. He's at his last two from downtown. Ten Jerry, points. Jerry Williams upset with that. A, very, a quick hitter out of the uh, out of a set underneath out of bounds play. And Shire got a great look at a three. pick from Neal. Rolls it into Bowers. Yes, and a foul! Wow! Lance Thomas picking up the foul, and McRoberts a little late. He was the double guy coming down from the top. Bowers, again, you talk about having a lot of confidence in a game. He has given Gary Williams some very good minutes in this ball game. Has he ever? We often talk uh, in this business about the wow factor, and tonight Bowers has delivered that off of the Terrapins bench. Not only has he gotten the five points, but he's been very active on the glass. Osby comes in for him. And that's been the outlet over the top of the press. Shire all the way to the rack, and he's fouled. With that unit out there for Maryland, there, we, there, there, there are no shot blockers. So once you get by the front line, and this is what Duke has been doing against the press. McRoberts throwing over the top, and he hits, uh, hits Shire in stride, and he sees nobody back. But Osby decided to challenge him. A good play by Duke to break the pressure. Coming up on the Acura Halftime Report, we'll catch you up on what's happening in the rest of the world of college basketball. Scores and highlights. All of that coming up. 
Neal with the rebound for Maryland. Timeout. 53 seconds remaining here in the opening half. Maryland got out to that 19 to 2 spurt. Gave them some distance. Duke has whittled away, gotten it down to nine. But Maryland uh, leading by 12 now. We talk about closures, Mike, and the lack of having those closures for Duke. It's, it's shown up this season many times, and it could be a factor tonight. Yeah, you know, you look at it, this this team, you, you, lose, you lose a guy like J.J. Redick, who is a closer by definition, and Sheldon Williams, two first-team All-Americans. So it's a search, and it takes time over the course of the season for that guy to step up. So we take a look back, uh, look back at the history of, of who are the closers in the past, and J.J. Redick, we talked about, Jason Williams in the national championship game, Shane Battier, one of the great leaders and winners of all time, Elton Brand, a the guy they go into the post, and maybe one of the greatest big shot players in the history of college basketball, Christian Leitner. So this program has had a history of that, but they were still searching for that guy on this team. 25, to a certain extent as well, this is also an illustration of where all of college basketball is. Everybody else has gotten better. The talent is spread throughout the course of the country and within most conferences as well. Shot clock and game clock differential about four seconds. Shot clock down to two. Paulus lost track of it. And that, that's just the example of the trouble that Duke has had recently, Tim. The inability in the last 10 seconds to hit the lane and make a play. And primary of your guard, Greg Paulus, has got to be aware of how much clock is on. But getting it in, uh, getting in Lance Thomas' hands really set them back. A costly turnover. Hayes at the buzzer. Would have counted had it gone. Listen to this crowd, and DJ Strawberry enjoyed the first 20 minutes, that's for sure. Maryland leading it by a dozen, 40 to 28 here at the break. Well, let's go over to Jen Hilberth, who has Gary Williams. Jen? Coach, you talked about offensive execution being important in this game. Are you pleased so far with what your team has done on the offensive end? Yeah, I think we're executing pretty well. I mean, Duke's good. They're, we're going to turn it over some, but I think we're trying to do what we're supposed to be doing, so that, that's all you can ask. And obviously you guys still have the 12-point lead, had a 20-point lead at one point. How has Duke chipped into this one a little bit? Well, we were really hot early. We made some shots that, you know, they were nice, they went in, but, you know, 12's more realistic from how we played, but, you know, these next 20 minutes are really going to be tough. Duke's got a tremendous amount of pride. All right, thank you, Coach. Right, Tim, let's go back to you. All right, Jen, the two winningest active coaches in any conference today in the game of college basketball, Gary Williams and Mike Krzyzewski. When we come back, we'll talk about what's been going on around the country in college basketball on the Acura Halftime Report. with super handling all-wheel drive. Acura, advance. The all-new Acura RDX with real-time traffic. Acura, advance. Get this out of here. This is the Stackers Union, kid. We stack meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Ooh, early bun delivery. Hey, touch. BK Stacker, meat and cheese, stacked high, tough guy. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. 
I'm seeking a match for good times. Uh, must have a passion for music. Looks are important to me. I like making movies, playing games, sharing lots of pictures, quiet time. With over 60,000 Windows Vista trained employees, Best Buy will match you up with a PC you'll love. Got anything like that? This gateway has everything you're looking for. And Geek Squad can personalize it for you. Right now, when you buy a new PC, get this great offer from Geek Squad. It's time to love your PC. Come find your match at Best Buy. The 99 cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right, just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents. Your dollar goes further at KFC. Remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? I do not recall that. It was too graphic for the kids, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to block you. You know, I gotta make this That's up. That's really not necessary. This is Vinny's watch. Name a regional sports network that broadcasts local sports in high definition. Anyone else? That's right. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV is the only sports network in the Mid Atlantic region where you can get your hometown teams in HD, like the Wizards and the Capitals. Plus, with award winning sports news and post game shows, the difference is clear. The network with the best Mid Atlantic sports coverage is also the network with the local teams in HD. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV, Comcast Digital Cable Channel 251. If it's local sports, it's here. If it's the latest on your teams. Our sports night on campus coverage started right and early. If it's award-winning coverage before, during, and after the game, it's here. Sports night is part of local 60 minutes all about your sport. If it's the Wizards, if it's the Redskins, if it's the Capitals, it's here. Redskins, go! If it's more local sports programming, if it's the games in high definition, it's here. If it's all of these things, it happens here together on Comcast Sportsnet. Because no other local sports network comes close. Here is your sports network. This is Comcast Sportsnet. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Acura. Acura. Advance. We welcome you back to the Acura Halftime Report. Maryland leading by a dozen, 40 to 28. James Guest leading the way with 10 points, 5 rebounds on 4 of 5 shooting. E.J. Strawberry has 8. We'll be back with more after this. Everything's getting faster, sexier, and yet less expensive. So, why not cars? Say hello to the G6 sedan, G6 coupe, and G6 hardtop convertible. G6, one of the fastest growing brands in America. Pontiac, designed for action. Sportsnet and ACC basketball. Over 40 games. The best players. The top teams. The rivalries and matchups that make the Atlantic Coast Conference the conference to follow this year. Live the excitement and passion of college basketball all season from Comcast Sportsnet, the Mid Atlantic's choice for local sports television. Don't miss all the action. ACC basketball on Comcast Sportsnet is presented by RSM McLeodry. Dedication, practice. To all-star Gilbert Arenas, everything must be perfect. Go all in for Wizards Guys Night Out. Get a lower level ticket, a picture with a Wizards dancer, and a free drink. First 50 tickets are upgraded to VIP. So don't ask permission, visit WashingtonWizards.com. Whether I'm catching passes or returning punts for the Redskins, it seems like I'm always running. I would never have enough energy if I didn't eat right and stay fit. That's why Comcast Sportsnet and the Washington Redskins Charitable Foundation are urging you to get up and go. For 30 minutes a day, instead of playing inside with video games, try going outside and playing with one of these. When you include your friends, being active is fun. For exercise and healthy eating tips, check out ComcastSportsNet.com. Score the winning touchdown. And remember to get up and go. Saturday night is hockey night. 
Saturday soundtrack. Sounds of the game you've never heard before. It's a hook, but it's a dive, too. On the ice and in the locker room. Email the booth. Get your questions answered from Joe and Craig during a game. Sports night and post-game live. Before and after the game. More exclusive Caps coverage. Fan interaction and player profiles. The complete Capitals game day experience. Watch Hockey Night in Washington. Saturday only on Comcast Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Serena Williams, and you're watching Comcast Sportsnet. Duke finished the first half on a 15-4 run to make a game of it. They trail by 12. They're going to need more from John Shire, who in 19 minutes was 3 of 5 from downtown with 11 points overall. We'll be back. Year's national champs gunning for another title. All eyes are on Duke after the Blue Devils knocked the Terps from the number one ranking. Now Maryland is looking for revenge in College Park. Then it's more Maryland Duke coverage with Sports Night on campus. It's the entire game day experience, live and up close. Sunday, the roadshow stops in College Park for Duke and Maryland. Sports Night on campus, presented by Wendy's, only on Comcast Sportsnet. It's a fact. Construction managers make good money, and the demand for trained construction managers is increasing. Maybe you work in construction and want to move up in your career, or maybe you're just looking for a new challenge. Westwood's construction management program not only provides you with industry contacts, but skills to help you become successful. Who knows? Someday you could end up managing the construction of a building like this. For a free brochure, call 1-800-283-4617. That's 1-800-283-4617. Call now. Hi, I'm Heather. And I hope that last commercial inspired you to call this number and ask for an informational brochure on career training. If you are thinking about a new career, I'll bet you have some questions, and our brochure will give you some answers. We'll take your call 24 hours a day, all night, and weekends, too. So what are you waiting for? Right now is a great time to call. For a free brochure, call 1-800-283-4617. That's 1-800-283-4617. Call now. There's nothing quite like Capitals Hockey. All season, Comcast Sportsnet brings you the games. Available in high definition on Comcast Sportsnet HDTV. He's been a shooting machine, and he scores! Saturday night is Hockey Night in Washington. And more Caps coverage and news on Sportsnet and Capitals Post Game Live. Hat trick, Alexander Simmons! Nobody does hockey better. Comcast Sportsnet. Local sports, how you want it, when you want it. On the web, ComcastSportsNet.com. Get the latest news on your team. Watch who's making headlines with video highlights. Email, Sports Extra and Sports Blast. It's free and easy. Sign up for breaking sports news, local game times, and programming alerts. On demand. Can't catch the game? Then see what you missed. Comcast Sportsnet, now playing on Comcast On Demand. Get interactive with your sports only from Comcast Sportsnet. Your online local sports connection, ComcastSportsNet.com. We continue here in College Park at the break on the Acura Halftime Report. Our score, 40 to 28. We're doing research at the Duke Primate Center on how lemurs learn. We're trying to save these endangered species. We're studying how light bends in deep space around massive objects like black holes and galaxies. We teach ballet and provide dance therapy for kids at a local children's theater. That's what we do. What will you do at Duke? We're learning film theory and production. And we just made our first national television spot. Covering the world of motorsports like no one else. This is the Speed Report. Oh, look at that. Going beyond the highlights. Special sauce for the fans. To bring you the full story. How did you do it? With expert analysis. What Formula One needs is personnel. A brilliant victory for him today. The guy that got shafted here. And unrivaled access. Great pitch stop. Heck of a race. You went for it. From the network, the drivers watch. The Speed Report. This is awesome. The Speed Report. Only on Speed. Listen up, America. The Cheesy Bites Pizza is back. It's back. Yeah! It's back. It's back. There's never been a pizza more pullable, more poppable, or more irresistible. Get a large one topping now for just $11.99.
America's favorite pizza, Pizza Hut. Name original sports network that broadcasts local sports in high definition. Anyone else? That's right. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV is the only sports network in the Mid Atlantic region where you can get your hometown teams in HD, like the Wizards and the Capitals. Plus, with award-winning sports news and post-game shows, the difference is clear. The network with the best Mid Atlantic sports coverage is also the network with the local teams in HD. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV, Comcast Digital Cable Channel 251. You just feel good in a suit, and K&G has thousands at great low prices that'll fit you and your budget. K&G, for men, for women, for less. Yes, it's crab cakes and terrapins when you come to College Park, Maryland. So far, uh, Duke's been seeing a lot of the Terps. Not enough of the crab cakes. Trailing by 12 here at the break. ACC Sunday Night Hoops rolls on here at College Park at the Comcast Center. Tim Braille, Mike Jeminski, along with Jen Hildreth. And, and Mike, I think you made a very strong point in the first half that if Duke is going to get back into this game, they have to go through Josh yeah, McRoberts. Right, and you know, you look at it defensively and then and really Maryland came out established themselves right away. It was Duke turnovers that hurt them early. 12 turnovers that led to 17 points and Dara and uh, DJ Strawberry was terrific in the open floor. Very opportunistic. You see the long rebound right there. Bowers stepping it out. Strawberry with eight points in the first 20 minutes. Then McRoberts started to get a little more aggressive when Osby came in. Took him off the dribble. The nice score right there. But this is really a startling graphic in the first half. And a nice post move against Bowers. Let's talk about that graphic. Uh, in the 16 possessions where the ball went through him, Duke scored 17 points, shooting 50%. When he didn't touch it, five points, only 25% with seven turnovers. With more on the Duke circumstances, here's Jen Hildreth. Jen? Jim, I talked to Duke assistant coach Chris Collins on his way back onto the court, and I asked what his team did better as they cut into this lead a little bit. And he said, we just played with more poise. At the beginning of the game, we got knocked back a little bit by Maryland's energy by the crowd. But when we started playing with poise and taking care of the basketball, that was key. Those 12 turnovers, their biggest problem in the first half. And a part of that poise is uh, getting the ball into the hands of McRoberts, who settles things a bit. This is not a typical team. Paulus is, is not your typical point. In fact, really, McRoberts has been playing the role of point forward for this Duke team. Jones can't hit. Gist on the offensive glass. Right over McRoberts. The long rebounds that time, and uh, Mike Jones still trying to find his shooting touch. Duke has to clean up the defensive glass. Nice blow by by Nelson, who had three fouls early and was a non-factor in the first 20 minutes. First bucket for him. The issue with Duke and uh, those fouls, they had no points off of their bench. The starters having to carry a heavy load on the road. Avekwe. Shire gets the rebound for the Blue Devils. Paulus alley-ooping, and there's Nelson. He's being heard from in the opening moments of the second half. And I'm sure he heard in the halftime speech that uh, his presence would be required in the second 20 minutes and he has showed up and actually Strawberry put his team in a bind by trying to go for a steal. Vasquez. Cut off of the baseline by Paulus. Shot clock now under 10. Over McClure. Rebound to Shire. In the opening moments of the second half. A bit better for Duke than the opening moments of the first. McClure. Not there. Maryland a little uh, passive here early, settling for jump shots. They need to attack. Strawberry, a whirling dervish. Yeah, much, much better mindset. Uh, and Strawberry has set the tone for Maryland and being very aggressive and going to the rim. Now Beckway goes for the steal. Knocked out of bounds right in front of us. 
There's the look inside. You see Paul is uh, really a free look at the basket. Demarcus Nelson running the ball, running the floor well. And Strawberry, you like this because he is under control in the paint. Had his legs underneath him, was able to shoot the little floater. He's made his last five shots. Shire misses a chippy, but it was well defended. Good help side defense from Maryland that time. Shire thought he had the baseline, and then the Terps defense recovered. McRoberts clears the shot from Gist. McRoberts fouled on the way up. A Beckway moving in picks it up, and that's three on him. Remember we talked about those early fouls, those cheap fouls given up by Maryland's front line in the first half. In the second, it could be a problem. Ryan, you know, you look at the play and uh, nice slip right there of the screen, and uh, McRoberts able to get inside. This is that free throw. Right? Three on a Beckway is, is key. But another, a, a calmer atmosphere in here yeah. for Duke right now. Very frenetic in the first 10 minutes of this game when they fell way behind. But the, both teams seem to be falling in a rhythm right now. The, the frenzy not quite there from the crowd at the start of the second half. Now recall what uh, Duke was able to do, particularly Nick Roberts. And you pointed out when Osby came in the game along with Bowers, it freed him up a bit more than when Gist and Abekwe were out there. Now, but both of those guys get a third foul in the opening moments of this uh, second half. It could become a problem for Maryland. Gary Williams wanted a foul as Paulus came away with it. Nelson gives it up to Shire. Jones with the steal. That was a very big defensive sequence by Mike Jones, who's not been known for his defense throughout his career. Uh, and maybe that's the shot that gets him off. He'd been 0 of 5 in the game to that point, so sometimes the layup can settle you down, but it started with defense. Paulus pumps. And an answer from Greg Paulus. Teams are going to have to respect him as a three-point shooter, Tim. He's very solid, 43% from behind the arc. He's now 2-3 in this game. And you're right. He, he seems to always be more in rhythm to take the shot. There's a turnover by Jones. Nelson. A little bit late in looking for Paulus. Shire shoots the tray. That may have been deflected. It's rooted out of there by a Beckway. Jones feeds Vasquez to Gist. Oh! Gravis Vasquez with a wonderful dime dished out. And that's a play that can get a crowd back into the game so the students back on their feet. Halftime's over. Nelson's floater won't go. This is more the open floor game that the Terps want. Jones pops out for the tray. McClure clears it for Duke. That was actually what Duke would prefer Mike Jones to be, a long two-point shooter. He had his foot over the line. Jones now one out of seven from the floor. McRoberts off the dish from Greg Paulus. Seven now for Josh. Five minutes deep into the second half, and the Maryland lead is ten. Led by 12 at the break. Gist took the extra step as he got that pass down on the low block. Mike Jones came away with a wonderful defensive play with the pilfer against Shire. And then the open floor, Gravis Vasquez from Caracas with love inside to Gist. I'm seeking a match for good times. Uh, must have a passion for music. Looks are important to me. I like making movies, playing games, sharing lots of pictures, quiet time. With over 60,000 Windows Vista trained employees, Best Buy will match you up with a PC you'll love. Got anything like that? This gateway has everything you're looking for. And Geek Squad can personalize it for you. Right now, when you buy a new PC, get this great offer from Geek Squad. It's time to love your PC. Come find your match at Best Buy. The 99 cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right, just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents.
Your dollar goes further at KFC. Dave? Hey, Victoria. Gosh, hey. I haven't seen you in so long. Where yeah, have you been? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've been around. I was in Vegas. Oh, hey, what'd you do there? I ate. Went to restaurants. Bradley Ogden. Delmonico. I'm a, I'm a bit of a foodie. Off on a caviar hunt. Arenas checks the clock. Gilbert for the win. Oh, baby! Gilbert Arenas, Agent Zero. Wins the game at the buzzer for Washington. Quick, name a regional sports network that broadcasts local sports in high definition. Anyone else? That's right. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV is the only sports network in the Mid Atlantic region where you can get your hometown teams in HD, like the Wizards and the Capitals. Plus, with award winning sports news and post game shows, the difference is clear. The network with the best Mid Atlantic sports coverage is also the network with the local teams in HD. Comcast Sportsnet HD TV, Comcast Digital Cable Channel 251. BCC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Pizza Hut, home of the pan pizza, where you can fill up on tons of toppings and our delicious crust. Want more taste? Get America's favorite pan pizza. Yes, they are enjoying from near and far. ACC Sunday Night Hoops, Duke trailing by 10. Coming up after our game, many of you will see Pac-10 basketball as it returns to FSN. 25th ranked Stanford battling upset minded Washington. Both teams looking to climb in the standings right here on FSN. For most of you, check your local listings. Well, how about the job Tony Bennett has done at Washington State? Wow. Indeed. Is that incredible? Yeah, I'd say, along with probably Billy Gillespie at Texas AM. Maybe John Beeline at West Virginia. Those those teams are probably some of the best teams in the country. Most of America knows the least about. No, no question about it. And, uh, Lorenzo Romar is struggling out there with uh, the Huskies of Washington. Big game for him. And, uh, meanwhile, Demarcus Nelson has worked his way back into the Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Six quick points for him here in the second half. After that last reversal, this is the closest that it's been on the scoreboard. Since it was 13 to 7, Maryland. Vasquez. I'm talking about he's gotten more aggressive and they just kind of flattened out and let him have the whole lane to work over Nelson. Robert's touch took place and he takes his man down into the paint and makes something good happen as he goes right up against Bowers gets the hoop and the harm now, here's the thing Tim, and he's got a decent low box game but he's better he's got Bowers or he's got more foot speed against so to be able to take him out on the floor face up and put the ball off the dribble I think is the, is the right decision against Bowers and again no disrespect to, to Will or to from Bobali Osby but you can just see from an offensive standpoint how much more McRoberts is going to go to the goal when those two are out there versus Abekwe and Gist. Vasquez got a nice pick from Bowers and used it. Well, Lance Thomas got sealed on the top side that time and then he couldn't come down to the baseline to help. And there's where Bowers' size pays dividends. 52-43. Henderson a leaner. Strawberry comes out of the pile with it. Ahead to Osby. Over McRoberts. Followed by Vasquez. Oh, he's everywhere. Blowing kisses to the Terps fans. He's got a little flair. I think he loves the crowd. Oh, there's some panache. Serious panache in his game. Osby fouls on the way up that time. Lance Thomas trying to stay active on the offensive glass. 
You need a Latin word. <laughs> you need a Latin word for panache. Work on that in the next 10 minutes. You get my thesaurus. There it goes. But here's the play, and there's a guy not, not giving up on the play, chasing it down. Both he and Bowers make that happen. And then the kiss to the crowd with apologies to Bill Raftery. Jen Hilberth has uh, a little more on these uh, wonderful signs that we see that can work on your vision at the free throw line as Lance Thomas shoots. Jen? Yeah, Tim, I don't know if Duke thinks they're so wonderful, but yeah, I wondered where these things came from. Are these just creative students making these things? But I found out, did a little digging. Brett Tillett, director of sports marketing here at Maryland, told me this is something that their department had created this season. They have about 25 of what they call those spinners. Three feet being the smallest, four and a half feet being the biggest, and it's a bit psychedelic. I don't know about you, G-Man, but I didn't have trouble shooting free throws without anything like that behind me. You know, you know the thing is, Jen, you stand on the free throw line and your sight line to the rim, those don't even come into play. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice idea, but you really don't see them. By the way, G-Man actually wore shirts that looked that way in 1978, 79, and 80. <laughs> there were nights with my partner here where I thought I saw something <laughs> like that flashing before my eyes. <laughs> While listening to his Bachman Turner taking care of business eight track. Easy now. <laughs> nice work by the Duke defense. Mick Roberts comes out of there with it. <laughs> I know you had that piece of tape. It's only on a need to know basis. <laughs> Mick Roberts over Osby. I mean, that's just a mismatch. They, the, you know, and that, and they've got to come with double team help, and uh, they're, they're just letting Osby guard him man to man. And McRoberts, a nice job of looking, seeing that no help was coming, and then being patient. Try an alley oop for Osby. He's able to recover it, gets it into the hands of Vasquez. Something good has generally happened when number 21 is at it. Isolated against Shire. That time the rainbow missed almost everything. Hayes. And there's a Beckway with a follow. Is anybody left standing after that possession? Maryland laying it all out on the floor. Second chance opportunities hurting Duke. Martinez Potsus will come in on the next dead ball for the Blue Devils. I think you got to go back into McRoberts in the post. He's having success. Give him some more touches. Nelson slashes to the rack, comes up empty. Short arm that a bit. And a foul, the end result. And Nelson just picked up number four. That's frustration. And that really could hurt Duke after the three early fouls. Blue Devils have made their run. McClure got that foul, his third, rather than the fourth on Nelson. That's big. We'll be right back. One morning, you wake up, and there it is gray hair and you wonder will people see me for who I really am how do you break out of that just for men stops gray from hiding who you are with five minute target gray technology easy today's a whole new ball game and then you wonder why did I ever put up with gray hair let the real you come through stay in the game with just for men Get this out of here. This is the Stackers Union, kid. We stack meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Ooh, early bun delivery. Hey, touch. BK Stacker, meat and cheese, stacked high, tough guy. The all-new turbocharged Acura RDX. Acura. Advance. Raised by man and machine, the all-new Acura RDX. Acura, advance. Shrimp and Super Shot, one of countless combinations in Dave & Buster's Power Combo. Choose from nine entrees like the new Whiskey Glaze Mixed Grill and get a $10 game card for only $15.99. Eat, drink, and play only at Dave & Buster's. For years, I've been telling you how to get cash now for your structured settlement or annuity payments. Times change, and your financial needs change with them. If you need cash today, J.G. Wentworth can help. We work with thousands of people just like you to get the most cash for their structured settlement or annuity payments. It's your money. Use it when you need it. 
Call J.G. Wentworth today. Call 866-523-7565. On Comcast Sportsnet. The one show devoted to your team. From the game to the locker room. Every season, every team. Live reports, breaking news, inside access to the players and personalities making headlines. More than just the score. Total sports coverage. This is your show every night, 6 30, 10, and 1 a.m. Sports Night, the heart of local sports. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. We welcome you back to College Park, Maryland. We're broadcasting in high-definition TV tonight on FSN. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, Jen Hilder. Maryland leading by 10. A number of notables in the crowd tonight. I noticed uh, Calvin Hill is here tonight. Of course, the uh, father of Grant Hill, outstanding National Football League player with the Cowboys. Saw Lefty Drizel. He was honored before the game tonight. Outstanding coach, whose son, of course, is on Gary Williams' staff. Chuck played here back in 85, and there's a foul. Shire gets the foul his first, and uh, Cal Ripken is sitting in the quality seats tonight, not far from where Steve Machetti would normally sit. The Ravens on him. Had a chance to go down and, and talk with uh, Cal for a few minutes after we got through with uh, our pregame activities. Wonderful guy. Oh, a great role model and a Hall of Famer now. Deservedly so. Absolutely. Congratulations to him. Off the ball, offensive foul. It goes the other way. Mike Jones. Yep, his first. An opportunity now for Duke to get this back into single digits. And even though it's an a, a, a offensive foul, it's a dead ball turnover, so Maryland able to get back and apply a little full or three quarter court pressure. Crosby, unfortunately, his head was in the way of that deflection from Shire as there was a miscommunication between he and Potsus. Well, and McRoberts and Duke have looked to throw over the top of this press consistently from the beginning of the game, and Duke very lucky that that ball went off of you. It was a sure turnover. Paulus, McClure, Shire, McRoberts, and Potsus, the five on the floor for Duke. Vasquez, joined by David Neal, Jones, Beckway and uh, a nice hoop inside as it goes to Poches. Poches that time the head fake. John Duke has used the head fake very well in this game. And Poches, people haven't seen a lot of him, but he is very explosive and he can get to the rim. Another turnover by Maryland. So they've gotten sloppy with the ball. 14 turnovers now committed by the Terrapins. They led by as many as 20 in the first half. McClure feeding McRoberts back outside the Potsus, and he delivers the goods again. That one extra pass making all the difference, and Gary Williams calls a timeout. Duke, an energized group. Well, you look at it, and uh, Duke able to carve back in by using the head fake effectively. Here is the out-of-bounds play. Potsus getting up in the air. We talked about it. Get to the rim in a hurry, and then nice interior passing by Duke after that. The pump fake again. Down to McRoberts for the finish inside. Duke down by six. Hey, what's up? Looks like you're in a hurry. I'm a legal document. Very date sensitive material. Chill out. You should do a Sudoku. Sudoku? Okay, I have to get to a legal proceeding. Ooh, legal proceeding. Look at you. Yes, and I can't be late. Oh, pardonnez moi. You know, I'm just a plant. Hey, my ride's here. I gotta go. Right. The post office comes to you with free package pickup. Yeah, I have important things to do, too, you know, like create oxygen. Here's a radically simple suggestion from eLoan. You can lower your rising monthly payments by consolidating your debt with a home equity loan and paying one lower monthly rate. Just call 1-800-TRY-ELOAN or go to eLoan.com. eLoan. Radically simple. I made the first batches of Sam Adams in my kitchen as a home brewer. Six weeks after he started the business, Boston Lager took the Best Beer in America award. Last year, more than 1,500 home brewers entered the Sam Adams Long Shot competition. Home brewers make some awesome beers. With Long Shot, beer drinkers could discover how good American home brewers are. Now you can try the Long Shot winners and enter this year's competition. Get your homebrew kit and instructional video at samadams.com. Just brew it. Yeah. 
The 99 cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right, just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents. Your dollar goes further at KFC. Maryland leads by six, and Jen Hildreth has more on another big Duke Maryland game coming up, right, Jen? That's right. It doesn't get much bigger than a rematch of the national championship game, and that's what we'll have next week. Here you see last year Chrissy Tolliver hitting what is now known as the shot for Maryland. That sent it into overtime. Duke had a chance at the end, but of course the Terrapins held on to win the national title. And next week we'll have it all for you right here as these two teams meet again here in the Comcast Center. Women's college basketball taking center court on FSN as number one ranked Duke takes on sixth ranked Maryland in a showdown between national title contenders. Coverage begins next Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific right here on FSN. I'll be here along with Beth Mowens and Debbie Antonelli bringing you all the action. I can't think of three better to be calling that game. I love listening to Deb and, and Beth. Do the job on the women's games. They're outstanding, and that's a that's a heck of a series that they've got going in a wonderful league for women's college basketball, the ACC. Duke uh, had a big win going into Chapel Hill this week uh, sure against did. North Carolina. And, uh, meanwhile, Duke getting back into this game as well. And how about the play? Well, Poachus turned it over that time. Hayes, Vasquez there to follow. A Beckway trying to keep it alive, out of bounds, last touch by Kenny, and it belongs to Duke. An opportunity missed right there. Gary upset uh, with the referee, with everybody at this point, and uh, Duke pointed back in. Let's follow up. We touched on McRoberts and how important he was, Tim. In the second half, he's had eight touches. Duke now six of eight from the floor with that, and he's got ten of their 14 points. Now, with Gist and Abekwe on the floor, let's see how productive he is with that combination working against him versus, say, Osby and Bowers, which is really where he's flexed his muscles. Marcus Nelson will come in on the next dead ball for the Blue Devils. Vasquez leaves it for Abekwe, rejected by McRoberts, his fourth block. Potsus all the way to the rack. Paul is there to follow. He rushed that shot a bit, was well defended. Opportunity missed for Duke. Vasquez, a solo by Gravis. That's a four-point swing right there. Uh, nobody stepped up for stopped the ball in transition. Vasquez very aggressive. We talked about it. Duke a timeout and looked like tired legs on that last rush up the floor by Duke by both Polis and Poses. Vasquez has eight of Maryland's last ten points. He's been as vital to the Terps cause as McRoberts has been to Duke's. I talked about how effective he was in the first half against Virginia and he is finishing the deal right now. The one thing Gary Williams talked about as his legs get stronger he is going to be a much tougher player and that's just going to come with being in the weight room and, and getting older and physically maturing. But Vasquez has been a huge factor in the second half. I want to go back to what you were saying about Josh McRoberts. Now a lot of touches Sometimes he finishes the play, but what you're suggesting is even with a Beckway and just in the game, as long as he gets a touch in the offensive possession, something good is generally going to happen. Yeah, he's one of the few bigs in the ACC with a positive assist to turnover ratio, which means he, he sees well, he makes good decisions, and he's always been that way as a basketball player. Even in high school, his coach really worked on him with the guard fundamentals. Nelson trapped. Paulus. The savior that time with the loose ball opportunity. Paulus feeds McClure and the cutter gets the deuce. 58-52, four in the game for David McClure. Yeah, McClure always seems to be in the right place and just uh, on the drive you've got to make yourself a receiver in the lane and he did that time shaped up well. Jones can't connect in traffic. Paulus clears. Numbers now. Nelson on a blow by. Ball was deflected. Mike Krzyzewski wanted a foul. Didn't get it. Jones gets it back. Rejected by McClure. Tremendous defensive play by McClure. Shire for three. Paulus the long rebound. Mike Krzyzewski wants to set up something in the half court here. Where did David McClure come from to get that rejection 
on the layup. That was an incredible play. But those are the plays he makes, Tim. And it's just the rebounds, the hustle plays, tracking things down from behind. McRoberts over Gist this time. A little tougher take. A Beckway, the rebound. I think he, sometimes he uses his right hand a little bit too much in his post moves. And, you know, you want to be ambidextrous, but uh, that time when you use your right, you bring it right back into the shot blocker. That was a tough try. A Beckway over McRoberts. Nine in the game for Evgeny Abekwe, the senior from California. That was a good solid move. We talked about making a quick, decisive move, which he did that time, and he went into McRoberts, so he eliminated him as a shot blocker. Another turnover by the Devils. Mike Krzyzewski's club trailing by eight. Welcome to the Stackers Union, kid. We build stacks of meat and cheese. Hey, what's this? Play out those dangles! Get some more meat down here now! Okay. BK Stacker, meat and cheese, stacked high, tough guy. Both the rich tapestry of love and devotion. Remote the sweet saccharin of all that devotion. Passion comes in many colors. The Pontiac Solstice. Okay. Okay. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi, Kevin, Hi. Right? right? Yeah, how are you? Good, good, good. And is it Margaret? Melissa. Right. You're much too pretty to be a Margaret. <laughs> Hi, I'm a Margaret. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I didn't, you know. Things don't always go down smoothly, but your beer should. With a specially lined can to seal in the taste, Keystone Light is always smooth, even when you're not. Got it. The 99 cent buffalo snack are only from KFC. Where else can you find 100% breast meat smothered in authentic buffalo sauce for just 99 cents? That's right, just like the original KFC snacker, it's still just 99 cents. Your dollar goes further at KFC. This week on the Best Damn Sports Show, period. Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo drops by. How's he dealing with the after effects of the botched field goal heard around the world? Romo can't get the spot down. Unbelievable. The worm. Dennis Rodman talks about life after basketball. And he gives his opinion on the stricter rules in the NBA. And Friday, a special best damn fight night live from the Playboy Mansion you don't want to miss. This week at 11. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, and Jen Hildreth. Maryland leading by eight. You know, Mike, uh, Jen is always light on her feet, but particularly so tonight, as are the coaches. Right, Jen? I'll take that light on the feet as a compliment. Yes, wearing sneakers, I always do, but coaches across the country wearing sneakers in honor of National Coaches versus Cancer Awareness Weekend to help raise awareness for the cause. This organization raised close to $30 million in 10 years to benefit cancer research. And I talked to Gary Williams. He's someone who's been heavily involved with that organization. And I asked if he had any kind of personal connection to it. And he said, well, it's basically just that I look at these doctors and they are so competitive. You think us coaches are competitive? These doctors are working hard to try to find a cure. That's pretty encouraging coming from a guy like him. Absolutely. Yeah. They've raised, uh, since that organization performed, $27 million yeah. to help find a cure for cancer. Yes. And by the way, Mike Krzyzewski's work in the community in and around the Duke Medical Center, people already know about. But I will also tell you, having been involved with the Jimmy V golf tournament and all that goes along with the V Foundation, Mike has been a real cornerstone for that and was really recruited like so many of us were by Coach Valvano when he was diagnosed with the disease. And it touches everybody. A teammate and good friend of mine, Kenny Denard, is a cancer survivor now and uh, is very involved with uh, coaches against cancer. He's going to come up here to the uh, Maryland or the Maryland Carolina game later on this month. With the chance to see him does a lot of good work with that organization. Absolutely. And Jim Beheim, Jim Calhoun, so many others across the country. We really honor the coaches for all that they do. Nick Roberts. 
Nice work by Big Josh again as Duke maintains contact, Mike, down by eight with five and change remaining. And he kept his pivot foot that time. Beckley didn't, or just didn't bite, didn't bite on the initial fake, but he was able to step through McRoberts so long can get to the rim. Jones, who had been so cool for so long, his second field goal of the night. That could be something to look out for now because he makes a shot like that. He may really warm up from beyond the arc the rest of the way. Well, the coaches talk about him being an X factor, and uh, if he gets hot, he could be an X factor in the last four and a half minutes. Gist has 10 rebounds tonight, so he and Abekway have been major factors on the boards, and they managed to stay out of foul difficulty here in the second half after picking up some cheap fouls early. Vasquez. And McClure may have been guilty of a push. He was. And didn't need it either with the long rebound. An unnecessary foul right there. Eric Hayes checks back into the game for Vasquez. I'm talking about uh, Blake and the impact that he had on, on Eric Hayes. The youngster is about 13 years of age when Maryland was winning the national championship. He cuts his hair like Blake and I don't think there's any question Gary Williams believes this young man can really be a stabilizer down the stretch as Paulus picks up the foul trying to check him. That's his second. Eric is from nearby Dumfries, Virginia, a very small town, about 30 miles outside of the D.C. and Baltimore areas. Very few free throws shot in this game, Tim, and both of these teams right now playing good defense, but both not even close to the penalty situation. A back way in traffic. Well, just as you say that, Duke getting a collection of them right here. Lance Thomas picks up a foul. Still only the 15 foul. Second on Lance Thomas. Jones, look out. Look out. If he makes one, you might be done. Well, he got a stretch. He got a great double screen off of that out of bounds play. Paulus. Jones the rebound. It's funny how when you know players like that, when they're making shots, all the other parts of their game elevate. He's getting on the glass now. This is a 10-2 Terrapins run. You know what, Tim? This is, this is how they're different, but there's a calmness, and this offense runs well with, with uh, Hayes at the point. Vasquez more of an improviser, a scorer, but Hayes really runs this offense, and they've been terrific in the half court with him. 3.30 remaining, and the Devils have some serious ground to make up after this stretch run by Maryland. Cheesy Bites Pizza is back. No pizza is more irresistible with 28 probable Cheesy Bites. Get a large one-topping pizza for just $11.99. Mm, cheesy Bites. What is true love? Want more fun? Get America's favorite pizza. Pizza Hut. If it's local sports, it's here. If it's the latest on your teams. Our Sports Night on Campus coverage started right and early. If it's award-winning coverage before, during, and after the game, it's here. Sports Night is part of 50 Minutes, all about your sport. If it's the Wizards, if it's the Redskins, if it's the Capitals, it's here. Redskins, score! If it's more local sports programming, if it's the games in high definition, it's here. If it's all of these things, it happens here together on Comcast Sportsnet. 
because no other local sports network comes close. Here is your sports network. This is Comcast Sportsnet. We're tuning up for America's hottest sport, and Sports Night has it covered. All this week, David Lee gets you up close for a 2007 in depth racing preview. Sports Night, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Taking a look at our game summary. Terrapin's on a very mean 10 and 2 run in the last four and a half minutes. And Roberts with 12 points, five of six shooting here in the second half. And a reminder coming up after our game on most of these FSN affiliates across the country Pac 10 basketball. Number 25 Stanford against Washington. Huskies in need of a victory to impress the tournament selection committee. They've been struggling in conference play. That'll be coming up. Check your local listings. Shire. Had that one knocked away by Jones with 25 to shoot. Shire has been very quiet in this second half. Maryland doing a nice job of blanketing him, not letting him make it many good looks. Well, Gary Williams' team has done a real nice job of identifying the scores. It's kind of hard to stop with McRoberts, particularly when he gets it at that position on the floor. Paulus picks up the foul. Three fouls on Greg Paulus. But Demarcus Nelson being a non-factor because of foul issues, got six early points in the second half to go along with Paulus and Shire being shut down in the second half. That has been a problem for the Blue Devils. Not a lot of three-point opportunities. Uh, Duke left some points at the free throw line, only six of 11 there. Now Beckwell off the window. Uh, he's been terrific in the low post. He and Gist have been really dominant. The lead is 14. Paulus for three. Thomas hits the deck. Possession arrow is to Duke. And the referee's done a nice job that time of getting in there, not letting the scrum get out of hand, which it might uh, in as tense as this game has been. Brian Zubek comes onto the floor, replacing Thomas for the Blue Devils. Well, this is rarefied air for this Duke program to uh, be coming off three consecutive losses for the first time since the 95-96 season. And it could be four if they don't uh, mount a huge comeback here in the closing moments. But Roberts with another deuce. 16 in this half on seven of eight shooting for Josh McRoberts. Only really been a one-man wrecking crew for this Duke team on the offensive end. Vasquez, a little stop and go. The extra pass to Gist. This one too strong. Nelson takes it right to the 10. That's just nice decision making. Knew he had a big player on him in full retreat. And an explosive move. He did the game for Nelson, all coming in the second half. Three very early fouls committed by DeMarcus in the first half. Left him on the bench. For most of the first 20 minutes. Well, that's it. You see what an early hold is, it does for you, Tim. It just takes so much energy to expend it, to get back into the game. You've got to within six, but then Maryland, and all you need is a little bit of a spurt, and you get it back out to the double digits. Paulus, a little stop and go. Find Shire on the other wing. Could not launch. Nelson does. Well, you would have really preferred, if you were Duke, to see Shire get that three point shot off rather than Nelson but again the defense had a lot to do with that happening and a foul by Paul you know and we, we talked and Maryland really played with a sense of urgency especially yes. in the first 10 minutes of this game and that we thought that it, it's, it was a little bit more critical for Maryland to get a win than Duke even though both of them were in a very precarious situation coming in with regard to the standings but uh, a, a, a well fought well earned yes. victory for Maryland tonight. Well, and, and let's not lose sight of the national implications here. Duke has won far many non conference games that have tremendous influence to the tournament selection committee. So even though their record is at 500 within the league, 
their long term security is probably still in a much better position than most yep. in a lot of power conferences. Maryland really did need this one in the worst possible way. Three and six in conference play. Another takeaway. So you talk about the losing streak, Tim. In, in 27 years since Mike Krzyzewski's going to do, they've only had losing streaks of longer than two 15 times. Amazing. Protégé of Bob Knight is going through the first ever five-game losing streak since the 72 season, a four-game losing streak. This would be four now for Mike Krzyzewski. Bob Knight had, it's been since 72 that he had lost five in a row, and he lost that double overtime game against Oklahoma State yesterday. But the four straight loss is one thing, but I know he's very satisfied with the effort that he's gotten from his team. And um, no one better to handle the circumstances than that man. And, and where do they go next? To Boston College, yeah. the number that the team in first place right now. A huge road win for them against Florida State. North Carolina took care of business against Wake Forest yesterday. Virginia with a shocking loss, especially the margin of it to Virginia Tech. Things kind of bunching up in the middle. There's that schedule, though. A lot of ats. Yep. And, uh, that, that's what makes it difficult for them down the stretch. And wouldn't you think, um, given their RPI, and this is, of course, not the number one factor. RPI is well down on the list. But this is a Duke team that could probably survive a conference record of, say, seven and nine because of the toughness of their strength of schedule. Yeah, I would I would think that. But that being said, uh, they've got some work to do to get to seven yeah. and nine. You could be in you know? peril. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And you could be in peril, particularly if uh, an extra mid major were to win a conference tournament. Time winding down. Zubek missing from point blank range. And then he's fouled. On the put so, you know, so the mindset, the mindset for for Mike Krzyzewski is for all these teams yeah. is not what you know, what number, what can we settle for? Sure. It's, it's they've got to go to Boston College and find a way to win. Absolutely. And uh, you know, Maryland thinking the same way. They're they're not looking, you know, long term. What do we need to get to? It's all right. We went out and took care. We needed this one today. Yeah. They've got to continue. I've said this before, though, and I mentioned it to Mike tonight when we spoke before the game. Can't think of anyone who's from a psychological standpoint any better with the modern day internet athlete than Mike Krzyzewski. But you know, he looked at me and he said, But you know, Tim, I've not been in this position in quite some time. Neither is his team, but neither is the veteran of so many years in three national championships. Gary Williams's club, of course, just trying to get into the field of 65 for the first time in three years. This will go a long way in helping them get on that road. The yellow brick road, as we love to call it, as they come away with a much needed win, 72 to 60, over the Duke Blue Devils tonight. For Jim Hildreth and Mike Jaminski, Tim Brando saying so long from College Park. We'll see you in a couple of weeks on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. There's a place where simple food like chicken is now simply extraordinary. Where tomatoes are tantalizing and basil breathtaking. Artichokes art, mushrooms masterpieces, crab incredible and asparagus astounding. Introducing Chicken Fresco, Portobello, and Oscar. From the place where fresh ingredients inspire fresh thinking, Ruby Tuesday. Putting out the fire is their business. Helping you put the pieces back together is ours. The cleanup and restoration specialists at 1-800-SERVE-PRO, working to make fire damage like it never even happened. Everything's getting faster, sexier, and yet less expensive. So, why not cars? Say hello to the G6 sedan, G6 coupe, and G6 hardtop convertible. G6, one of the fastest growing brands in America. Pontiac, designed for action. Get this out of here. This is the Stackers Union, kid. We stack meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Ooh, early bun delivery. Hey, touch.
be case. Last year's national champs gunning for another title. All eyes are on Duke after the Blue Devils knocked the Terps from the number one ranking. Now Maryland is looking for revenge in College Park. Then it's more Maryland Duke coverage with Sports Night on campus. It's the entire game day experience, live and up close. Sunday, the roadshow stops in College Park for Duke and Maryland. Sports Night on campus, presented by Wendy's, only on Comcast Sportsnet. I've been in this area all my life. I love it here. I know your teams because they're my teams. And if a story needs to be told, I'm going to tell it. This is what we do, the heart of local.